Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Intel's i9-9900K versus Ryzen 7 2700X, which should you buy? Well, if you want the best value for the money, would you be surprised if I said neither one? Right now in the fall of 2018, neither of these is the best value for the money. The Ryzen 7 1700 is $179 right now on both Amazon and Newegg. That is the deal. It is $130 less than the 2700X and it's only 10% slower when you overclock the 1700 to 3.7 gigahertz, which it will do on the included cooler. I have three of them. They all do it just fine, even on budget boards. I recently did a build using this Gigabyte Gaming 3 board. It's $69. That is an incredible value for the money for the features it comes with. A $70 board, $180 chip, $250 for an eight core 16 thread chip, a included 95 watt stock cooler with RGB lighting and a nice featured B350 board that will easily overclock to 3.7 gigahertz. That is less expensive, including the motherboard, than just the 2700X. That's a deal. This is the stock cooler that comes with a 1700. It does have a copper core on the bottom. It is a 95 watt TDP cooler. And yes, it really will cool that chip without any issues at 3.7 gigahertz fixed on all the cores. That is a nice 500 megahertz overclock over the stock speed. Stock, it runs at 3.2 out of the box on all the cores and threads. So that's a very nice, easy to do overclock, even on a $69 motherboard. Now it is true that the 2700X is faster. It's four gigahertz on all the cores out of the box using the included Wraith Prism cooler. But you're paying $130 more to get 300 megahertz more speed. It sounds nice but that's not even 10% more performance. It's about 7% more performance clock speed. Now there's a few optimizations in the chip which makes it about 10% faster. I have benchmarked them and tested it. It is almost exactly 10% difference in terms of pure CPU speed. But unless you have a really fast graphics card, you're never gonna notice the difference. And speaking of graphics cards, that brings me to the current graphics card deal on the market. The RX 570 cards are the current deal price to performance for new cards. $140 after mail-in rebate for the four gigabyte card and $160 after mail-in rebate for the eight gigabyte card. If you can swing the extra 20 bucks, I think the eight gigabyte card is worth it, but it depends upon what you're doing and what you're playing. At 1080p, the extra uh, four gigs of VRAM isn't a big deal, but future proofing is already not always nice and it is only $20. Now links to everything I've described is down in the description below, both to Amazon and Newegg. The video cards are to Newegg only, that's where you get the deal on those, but the CPUs and the motherboards will be to both Amazon and Newegg. And right now, this is by far the deal. So if you watched my recent i9 launch video, if you've watched my various uh, comparisons of i7s versus Ryzen 7s, and you're sitting there asking yourself, what should I buy? If price to performance is the most important thing for you, and if you're willing to sacrifice 10% of your performance and type a 37 into the multiplier of the BIOS, it really is that simple, then this is by far the deal. Speaking of deals, if you want some cool games, the current deal with the AMD RX cards includes three free games along with them, $120 value. If you were going to buy them anyway, you may or may not, but if you were, that actually makes the RX 570 four gigabyte card 20 bucks after mail and rebate. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Star Control Origins, and Strange Brigade are the three free games that you get with either card. You might be asking about the RX 580. The RX 580 is not currently the deal. The price difference between a 570 and a 580 is currently about 25%. But there is only a 10% difference in performance between the cards. The RX 580 is about 10% faster than the 570. 25% more money, 10% more performance. That's not a deal if you're looking for price to performance. So right now for 1080p gaming, this is the deal. Now there are some good deals on the market right now for used graphics cards. There's a lot of uh, GTX 1070s coming off cryptocurrency. If you don't mind an X mining card, those are in the 200 to 250 range. And those are 50% faster than these, but that's $50 more money. They're used, they're X mining cards, and they don't come with three free games. 
So if you want something to tide you over until Navi comes out sometime in maybe six months, then this might be worth considering. I want to briefly circle around back to motherboards because one of the questions I'm willing to bet at least a few of you may be asking is, B350, is that the best to buy? What about an X370? What about a B450? Can you put a first generation Ryzen on a B450 or X470? Yes, you can. You don't need to, but it certainly will work. And some of the B450 boards aren't too much more expensive than the B350 boards. There's not a lot of difference, but if you'd like to just get a newer board, you certainly can. You'll notice that I have the B350 Tomahawk on here. I've previously reviewed it, very nice board. This is currently $85. It's a full-size board. If you simply want a full-size ATX board, it's a great, great board. The Gaming 3 from Gigabyte is a micro ATX board. But there's a variety of boards you can buy at a variety of price points. I wouldn't spend over $100 on a non-X Ryzen chip. I mean, you can, you can get more features. You can certainly go with a 150 or 200 hour board. They're not faster. They're more full featured. They've got nicer sound chips or dual LAN chips or more M.2 slots. And by all means, go that way if you want to, but we're looking at $180 CPU, $150 motherboard for that really is kind of out of place. I really do think these are the good choices for this CPU, which is why I did do a build with this. That's the $900 build on my channel which actually would be a bit less now with this lower price, lower price on that, lower price on these. Man, this is a good deal. As I mentioned before, links to all of these products to Amazon and Newegg will be in the video description below. I will also have links to various reviews on these parts, benchmarks on the RX 570s, my build with the Ryzen 7 1700 and that Gigabyte board. All of that will be linked down there as well. So if you'd like to see benchmarks, charts, graphs, uh, unboxings, etc., of all these things, those will be linked down in the description below. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with a big huge red button directly below. Please hit the bell notification icon next to the subscribe button if you'd actually like to be notified when new videos come out because otherwise YouTube doesn't really send out notifications. Questions, comments, thoughts, queries, posers, whatever you think, put that down in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. I will see all of you next time.